Today I want to talk about something that's a very fascinating aspect in terms of immunology today, and that is the role of resolution of inflammation and how it's applicable to the aging process. But before I start, I want to give you a few disclosures. I am an owner of a medical foods company it's called Zone Labs, and I am the president of a nonprofit a medical research foundation that supports clinical research. This year, there was a major article in Nature talking about the aging process. And the key points were the following. About 70% of all people 65 years or older have at least two chronic diseases. Most chronic diseases have a metabolic, a common metabolic origin. And the more chronic diseases you have, the faster you will die. That's the essence of basically when we talk about age management, of uh, basically how to basically decrease the burden of chronic disease. Because in many ways, all chronic diseases lead back to inflammation. In fact, this was a cover story of Time magazine published over a decade ago, talking about the secret killer, the surprising linkage between inflammation, heart disease, cancer, Alzheimer's, and other diseases. You would think with this being on the cover story of Time magazine, we'd have a war against inflammation. We have a war against cancer, a war against Alzheimer's, but we hear nothing about the war against inflammation. Why? It's actually far more complex than those diseases. But we think of inflammation as something that's bad. But in reality, we need it. We need a zone, a zone of inflammatory responses. If we have too little of an inflammatory response, we become a sitting target for microbes. Our physical injuries would never heal. But if the inflammatory response is too strong or is not turned off sufficiently, the body begins to attack itself. If we want to really manage aging, we have to keep inflammation within that zone, not too high, but not too low. So exactly what is inflammation? Well, first of all, it's complex. That's why we know so little about it. It's a complex orchestration of both pro-inflammatory and anti-inflammatory events, working in an intricate dance-like partnership. We think of inflammation as usually associated with pain. Something hurts. That's why you see a physician. But we know that pain is associated with a group of hormones, hormones called acosinoids. And how do we know this? Because virtually every anti-inflammatory drug known in the medical science whether it be an aspirin, a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory, a COX-2 inhibitor, or a corticosteroid. They have one common mechanism, to reduce the level of pro-inflammatory acosinoids. Now, there are many events in our life that can turn on these ancient inflammatory responses that are deeply embedded in our genes. I've mentioned two of them already, microbial invasion and physical injuries. But now we know there's a third, a third component in our daily life that can turn on the same powerful inflammatory responses, and that is our diet. And we also know there are actually two distinct phases of the inflammatory response. There might be an initiating effect. You might get a microbial invasion. You might twist your ankle. You might eat a salami sandwich. It really doesn't matter. The most primitive part of your immune system responds with a generation of a pro-inflammatory initiation response. This gives rise to cellular destruction. This is what the ancient Romans described 2,500 or 2,000 years ago when they described inflammation as heat, pain, swelling, redness. And that's exactly the way most physicians still describe inflammation today. But we also know there's a discrete active process, totally different than the turning on of inflammation, that turns it off. It's called resolution. And when this resolution process is activated, this gives rise to cellular rejuvenation. In an ideal world, this acute inflammatory response would be balanced by a corresponding resolution response, and the body would come back to equilibrium. Unfortunately, we do not live in an ideal world. What happens is either the initiation phase is too strong, or most more likely, the resolution phase is too weak. And what you get now is basically a situation of generating now chronic cellular inflammation. This is inflammation now below the perception of pain, 
but still causing the same cellular destruction. And this type of inflammation can linger for years, if not decades. Why? You're not aware of it. And eventually it causes enough in-organ damage, we call it chronic disease. Could be heart disease, could be cancer, it could be Alzheimer's. But they all start with chronic cellular inflammation. Now, it's hard to talk about a subject that you can't feel or can't measure. But we can measure cellular inflammation. And now that we can, we can ask what diseases are associated with it. Let's take two which have been epidemic in America, obesity and type 2 diabetes. We seem powerless to stop these epidemics. We can include heart disease, cancer, Alzheimer's. But why stop there? Let's add asthma, allergies, autoimmune disorders, neurological disorders, ocular disorders. You can see these are the vast reasons why a person goes to see a physician. And yet they have a common etiology, a common source, increased chronic cellular inflammation. So what exactly is it? It's a mismatch. A mismatch between the initiation and the resolution of inflammation. And this mismatch gives rise to chronic activation of the most primitive part of your immune system, which is called the innate immune system and generating inflammation, but now below the perception of pain. What is the innate immune system? It's ancient. We share it with plants, but it's complex. In fact, so complex, the 2011 Nobel Prize in Medicine was awarded for understanding how this begins to work. And as you see, it is a little complex, and especially at 8 o'clock in the morning. Well, let's make it a little simpler. The key factor it's a, a trans gene transcription factor. It's called nuclear factor kappa B. This is the master switch that turns on and turns off inflammation. In each cell in your body, you have receptors on the surface looking for indications the cell is under attack. And if so, they send through signaling mechanisms, signals to nuclear factor kappa B, which once activated, goes to the nucleus and causes the expression of a wide variety of pro-inflammatory proteins. It could be the COX-2 enzyme. It could be basically cytokines like interleukin-1, interleukin-6, or tumor necrosis factor. These leave the cell and then interact with other cells to say, we're under attack, bring out the troops. But this particular gene transcription factor is under profound dietary control. Because again, remember, drugs have only been around for 80 years. Food's been around for 400 million. So there are certain factors in our diet that can turn on nuclear factor kappa B. One of these are basically overconsumption of omega-6 fatty acids. Another are overconsumption of saturated fatty acids. Still another, an overconsumption of excess calories uh, and also excess carbohydrates. But we also have certain nutrients in our diet that can turn off, not completely, but to modulate down the activity of nuclear factor kappa B. And these include omega-3 fatty acids and polyphenols. Polyphenols are the chemicals that give fruits and vegetables their color.